assalamu alaikum and uh, welcome to program sochi uh, today i have a very interesting topic and a very very important topic because the uh, weight gain and uh, weight loss is an issue that you know most of the population uh, face it at one point of time uh, so today i wanted that you know i give you a clear idea and a uh, clear picture of how you can uh, lose weight uh, in a healthy way and um, the kind of you know uh, stress and the kind of judgments um, and the kind of uh, difficulties people have to face with uh, having weight gain issues or uh, you know are seen in a different light um, as if you know they are contributing to their weight gain or humne dekha hai ki zyada tar aise logon ko kaha jata hai ki you know तुम बहुत खाते हो या ऐसे जोक बनाए जाते हैं आ, कि सारा खाना तो शायद तुमने खा लिया सो यू नो बड़ी इनसेंसिटिव स्टेटमेंट्स हैं और उस वक्त तो शायद वो लोग हमारे सामने हंस देते हैं और आ, वो हमारे जोक को बड़ी अच्छी तरह एज अ गुड स्पॉट लेते हैं आ, मगर उसके बहुत साइकोलॉजिकल इफेक्ट्स होते हैं आ, और वेट गेन के साथ मसला ये है कि जब आप स्ट्रेस में होते हैं आ, तो वो आप जितनी भी डाइट कर लें Um, आपका वेट नीचे नहीं जा सकता सो फॉर दैट मेडिकल क्लैरिटी और साइंटिफिक क्लैरिटी आई हैव अ गेस्ट विद मी टुडे इन माय स्टूडियो डॉक्टर मजहर हुसैन ही इज एन एम डी ही इज स्पेशलाइज इन हेयर ट्रांसप्लांट वेट लॉस लाइफ स्टाइल डिजीजेज डायबिटीज पी सी ओ एस एंड मच मोर सो ही गिव अस अ क्लियर Uh, picture about uh, you know how we can uh, treat the underlying issues that come with uh, weight gain or some other issues um, so that you know you actually lose weight for uh, good and you lose it in a healthy way so for that we have an amazing doctor with us um, he is doing a great job he is uh, working in the field of hair transplant uh, hair transplant and uh, he is working with uh, weight loss as well uh, so he'll introduce himself for us uh, assalam alaikum doctor sir wa assalam uh, ji doctor sir i want want uh, i would want you to introduce yourself uh, so that you know people we can see and understand you know what is your speciality yeah i'm dr mazhar hussain uh, i graduated from copenhagen university back in 1994 Since 2004 I've been mostly working with uh, hair transplantation or medical hair restoration. Okay. But in the past 3-4 uh, years I'm working more and more with the people that are suffering from weight uh, okay. gain from obesity or weight diabetes or polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay. So lifestyle related diseases uh, okay. that are that often have the same root cause okay. although they are quite different otherwise yeah mm. yeah exactly okay so doc sir um, as you're working with uh, you know weight issues and um, hair transplant and all and uh, we understand that you know it has a lot of psychological effect um, on patient's health as you know uh, not only physical but mental health as well uh, because weight gain has its um, physical also side effects and then mental side effects as well uh, so how do you see it and when patients come to you you know what is their major complaint because when you have gained weight it's not uh, it doesn't just stay with you hmm. the society start seeing you you know um, from a different angle you know they start seeing you as uh, somebody who's not one of them so can you tell us you know what do they say and what is their major uh, concern i think that's true because uh, society we see people that are overweight or obese we see them in a different way yeah. we might consider them to be responsible for their condition exactly. and we might see that they lack will power yeah. by they're not just controlling what they eat and uh, if they really wanted to they should take control of their life and will with their will power they should reduce yes. their weight and uh, there are actually studies that show that uh, nearly 80% of people that are mm. obese or overweight mm. they feel that they are being treated uh, disrespectfully by even the medical profession Yeah. So the people that you might seek out to get some help to reduce your weight okay. even the medical profession may see you as uh, someone who doesn't have a uh, good uh, character lack of will power and so on okay. uh, likewise even uh, people that are overweight or obese uh, children around 64% of mm. the uh, they feel that their children do not want them to 
uh, go along with social gatherings and oh functions because God. the children are embarrassed about their parents being overweight. And I think that's a huge psychological trauma. And it does something to you if you feel that maybe people around you see you in a very, very negative way. And considering that in many cases, it's really not up to the patient okay. to, to just lose their weight because we know for, uh, from studies that there are so many reasons why you might gain weight and it's not just about your willpower. Yeah, or, or it's not just about, you know, you eating a lot because mm. people uh, assume that maybe you're eating a lot, you know. Uh, the first thing they will have to, I think, hear is that, uh, you know, stop eating so much and mm. why do you eat so much? So, it's um, the scientific uh, studies tell that it's not just about eating mm. a lot of food. Mm -hmm. It can have different underlying issues. There are many reasons for uh, weight gain and uh, just to name a few, vitamin D deficiency can cause you to gain weight, okay. insulin resistance can cause you to gain, uh, gain weight, okay. thyroid problems can uh, make you gain weight. If you are ferritin deficient, which I would say probably around 30-40% of uh, women are, oh, it's okay. the most common nutritional deficiency in the world. Okay. So if you're suffering from any particular uh, disorder that can contribute to your weight gain, and the only thing that the doctor or the medical profession is focusing on yeah. is what you eat, exactly. then they may not really reach their target and it might be very frustrating, which we see with a lot of uh, patients that are suffering from uh, yes. overweight or yeah. obesity, that they really tried everything. And the, what is really amazing is in many cases, yeah. overweight people may actually eat less than the next person. Oh, but really? because their body wow. is so insulin resistant, okay. they may not be able to lose weight regardless. That's a very important point to understand, actually. Um, uh, so, I would like to know that uh, is this uh, mm, a perception of, you know, uh, gained weight um, as a patient's responsibility um, only in our country because you have worked, you know, all over the world? Mm. Uh, or, or do you see it's like worldwide that people see it in a different light and, you know, people see that, okay, this person is fat, so it's his responsibility maybe you know he's being uh, careless or he's into you know bad eating habits so how is it for the, you know all over the world i think the stigma is probably even worse in the western world because mm. uh, we attach so much uh, status to being slim and being exactly. lean exactly and uh, 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 a study from sweden confirms this also and i think uh, one of the most developed countries in the world is S sweden, yeah, sweden and scandinavian yes. countries yeah. and uh, from my practice in uh, Denmark, Norway and UK, I see the same tendency that we blame it on the patient. We are not really mm. very open to the uh, fact that the patient may actually do whatever he she is able to and still not uh, be able to lose weight. And unfortunately, a lot of the research that's done on uh, mm. weight and obesity mm. is sponsored research unfortunately by oh, okay. uh, yes. uh, uh, it's by the food industry actually. exactly so you it is uh, relatively easy to lose weight yeah. if you do it in a very scientific way and if you okay. do it with the uh, it's the independent uh, medical research at hand okay. it is actually possible but the way I uh, see it is first and foremost I want patients to be diagnosed properly okay. I can give you an example I had a uh, a lady in the 30s, she had been to a number of nutritionists, she had been to doctors and what they would all do, they would give her a diet plan and tell her, look, you need to eat less fat, you need to eat less calories okay. and you lose weight. When she came to me, she slept two, three hours a night, she was exhausted, she had to give up her, uh, the course she was doing and uh, she was very frustrated and when I spoke to her, I could see that things were not totally right and I said, hmm. look, Sleeping two, three hours a night is really yeah. something that can make you gain weight, yeah, apart yeah. from a whole range of other problems. Exactly. So we did uh, some extensive blood tests and she was actually hypothyroid, she oh, was okay. uh, diabetic, she was uh, severely insulin resistant, which diabetic patients are anyway, folic acid deficiency, vitamin D deficiency and B12 uh, vitamin deficiency. Now focusing as the other nutritionists and the doctors had done before she yeah. came to me 
focusing solely on the food, the food yeah. would not really help her uh, much and even if she really did what the doctors told her to she would probably have a very tough time losing weight because again you know i think that uh, that should be only a layman uh, excuse to understand you know that the weight gain is only because of the food i think uh, the doctors and everybody uh, should see all the contributing factors yes, sure. uh, you know mm. so so food can be of course one of the contri contributing factors but it cannot be the sole factor for uh, weight gain so that's i think amazing mm. way to mm. go about it an mm. amazing way to actually you know guide people and then um, treating underlying uh, issues as well mm. not just the you know uh, weight gain exactly. it, weight gain can be the symptom of all the other uh, issues yeah i would say weight gain is probably in far most cases is really just one of the symptoms yeah. of underlying disorders yeah. it may be in some cases it can be lack of will power but yeah, i'm also exactly. afraid that we have misguided our yeah. patients so in far most patients that have had a very tough time losing weight I feel it has been relatively easy once I spend around one and a half two hours explaining to the patients what it is what is it that causes weight gain exactly and from there we take it so that they have a good understanding of their condition exactly. before we move on to exactly. start the actual weight gain yeah. uh, w a weight loss yeah. exactly so if you're right uh, that you know generalizing um, it on everybody yes there would, would be patients who are actually uh, who lack will mm. uh, but again generalizing it on every uh, but is not a good idea it's not fair and in most cases it's not will power believe me a lot of overweight patients have really struggled hard and Gee. done what the doctors say Gee. and if you are hypothyroid yeah. you will not just be able to overcome your hypothyroidism because you have the will power yeah. it will be really really tough for exactly. you exactly that needs to be treated yes so dr mazza um i want you to give us an example you know how do you take a case and if for example i have come to you as a patient and um, how would you take the history and how would you you know take the patient towards the weight loss so what is the typical method or how do you follow it It's important for me to have a proper history from the patient to understand how the development was if there's any in the history anything that indicates a certain disorder in the patient okay. then I'll need that okay. to guide me in terms of yeah. what to do in uh, for the investigations okay. but in far most patients I would want to do a number of blood tests okay. particularly uh, vitamin D is very common males and females you would have vitamin okay. D deficiency okay A lot of women have iron deficiency or at least they have low levels of ferritin. Okay. But there can be a number of other hormonal changes that can cause uh, right. weight gain also. Right. So once we have established whether there is any underlying condition, okay. then we actually do a sitting of 1 hour, 1 and a half to 2 hours depending okay. on what we find. And we go through the background of weight gain. What is it that causes weight gain okay. in that patient? All right. Uh, often it's insulin resistance mm -hmm. and I'll then walk them through what happens in their body because patients will say look doctor I will do everything you say but when I have these cravings I simply have to eat oh, and yes. uh, then I explain where the craving is coming from yes. what is the background hmm. and you'll be amazed that people that would say okay look I have to have food at this 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 time otherwise I'll, I can't function at all and within few days they realize well it was actually something uh, there was an underlying explanation for this yeah. and once we address that they can do away with their cravings easily okay. and uh, usually uh, my claim is in far most patients once we have done the proper diagnosis in 4 to 8 weeks they will see their uh, blood tests improve mm -hmm. they will see their weight coming down okay. and they will see that the triglycerides or the lipids in their blood is improving okay. and something called an inflammation parameter yes. called uh, hscrp yeah. high sensitivity c reactive protein yeah. is also improved okay. so the good thing is that once we have the baseline we know where hmm. we started out from Bilkul. and 4 to 8 weeks later the patients can see wow this is actually working okay. and in far most cases uh, i would say around 10% i need more than uh, those 4 to 8 weeks okay but uh, in 90% of patients uh, within 4 to 8 weeks 
they will see the improvement and they will see the weight loss. Okay, that's amazing. Uh, so, Dr. Sab, um, a very, uh, I think, relevant question for everybody because um, we see that these things, you know, if you have to go to your nutritionist, if you have to go to a doctor for um, weight loss, this looks like a luxury uh, thing, you know. It, it feels like you know a layman or a common man cannot actually go to a nutritionist or um, because we assume uh, or people assume general uh, public that this is a very expensive uh, kind of treatment or this is an expensive field. Uh, so what would you say about that if somebody with a low socio-economic class uh, wants to address it through a doctor or uh, through a proper channel, uh, do you think is it affordable and uh, how do you cater to that, uh, that kind of? I think uh, the major problem is the blood test because other than the blood test is actually something where you can save a lot of uh, uh, money, you can save expenses because uh, okay. the things that I would recommend would be that you eat whole foods rather than you eat packed food or processed foods. Okay, anything, sorry to cut you, mm -hmm. anything in a packet is not a good idea. To eat. Generally speaking, yeah. if it's uh, so that is what you may yeah. in the packing, which is usually more expensive exactly. what we would consider being a status thing Absolutely. that we are buying something from the fast food or from a shop yeah. that is in a packet and it's a maybe says whole grain a multi-grain yes, yes so actually in most cases packed food is super unhealthy okay. and will contribute to weight gain okay and okay. if you take the same amount of calories yeah. but from natural whole food sources right. you're likely right. actually to lose right. weight just by that um, so, in simple terms, you're saying that, you know, if we uh, eat uh, homegrown food or whatever, you know, whatever is um, available in the market yes. and is not processed, it's exactly. not packed exactly. and is not frozen, That's uh, true. is the right mm. kind of food. We exactly. Eat. It's it's the right kind of food and you will also feel better and instantly within a few days, you'll start noticing a difference. The food that we are eating and that in our society, in the subcontinent, we seem to see everything that is a sign of uh, uh, development. Yeah. Yes, data simply yeah. is true. Yeah. Yeah. That is often full of harmful fats and it's full of l a lot of calories. Yeah. I w won't mention names, but I can yeah. tell you that a lot of fast food would contain yeah. anywhere between 30 to 40 to 50 teaspoons of sugar in one meal. Good Lord, that's a lot. That's a lot. That, that's a lot. Okay. Um, so, Dr. Uh, actually, I know that, you know, we can't sum up. This is a very uh, interesting, this is a very valid um, and this is a very, very relevant uh, topic for us. But uh, the thing is that, you know, we have, uh, we are short of time. Mm. So, I know we can't sum it up. But uh, I would like you to come again and uh, have, that would yeah, be great. Uh, so give us more ideas and mm. uh, give us, you know, uh, some more um, uh, details about uh, weight loss and you know uh, how people with low income also can you know uh, utilize or how people with low income can also go and uh, talk to a doctor and get a fair idea of you know yeah. what to do with the tests and all uh, so thank you so much for coming thank you for having me yeah mm. i'll definitely invite you again and we'll have sure. another program thank, thank you. you i hope you uh, got some good information about weight loss and a healthy way to lose weight um, and what kind of foods you should eat if you are looking uh, to lose weight or even if you're not looking to lose weight you know uh, what kind of foods we should eat uh, that are healthy and that are actually food that is not uh, something else you know um, I also mostly tell people and uh, to children as well that you know the easy way to understand what is healthy and what is not healthy is that you know anything that comes in a package that comes in a plastic bag um, is not real food so if you eat real food uh, that is grown from you know your own soil that is um, that comes from your the own uh, market uh, is real food so anything that is packed you know you should avoid eat eating that and uh, then you will have a healthy lifestyle even if your weight see weight um, we as humans come in all packages we uh, come with different colors with different shapes and sizes that is completely fine the the topic we are touching and why we are talking about weight loss why we talked about it is because um, uh, it is health related and it has a lot of effect on your mental health as well uh, so the goal is not just to lose weight to look good the goal is to uh, be an ideal weight uh, that is you know healthy for you and your body 
So inshallah, I'll see you all with another interesting and important topic. Uh, so Allah Hafiz, bye then. Thank you.